Hey everybody, Eric here. Um, happy Friday. It is, it's that time again. It is time for our live stream. And this time I am, I have the luxury of presenting with Tyson, who's also on the line as my co-commenter. What's your, what would the, your title be or your role for in this situation, Tyson? Oh, my role at all times is all knowing, all seeing a supreme baby at the center of the universe. I just thought that was a given. Okay. I was going to say, I don't know how, how to refer to you. You're my, you're my co-host. <laughs> you're my co, my co-presenter. Oh, I, I'm just the, uh, I'm just the sidekick. Just the sidekick. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> every superhero needs, needs a sidekick. Um, <laughs> Let's talk a few minutes about what, while well, people are starting to stream into the chat about what we're doing today and uh, just kind of let people filter in for a couple minutes and then we're going to go ahead and get to it because that's really what you're here to see. I could spend our whole time just chatting with you and bantering, but to be honest with you, mm -hmm. I actually have more fun modeling than I do just talking to the camera. So. So for those that are just joining us and hadn't seen the announcement or hadn't seen the post on the forum, we are modeling something from the nightmare before Christmas. And this was my idea because not only do I love the film, um, I love Tim Burton's style that of course was embodied into the film perfectly. But I also think it's appropriate because we're going right into, we're not streaming next week, are we Tyson? Because in the US we've got the Thanksgiving holiday. That is correct. That's correct. Okay, so next week we're off, and then obviously we've got we're rolling into the you know to the other set of holidays here, the winter break. Um, perfect timing with with Halloween um, in the not too distant past, or rearview mirror, and Christmas and the other holidays to look forward to. So, so with that, is there any housekeeping items you want to um, address, or anything in the comments that we should start with, Tyson, before we just dive in? No, let's let's dive in. We've got a lot, a lot of folks jumping in saying howdy. Thank you for joining us from everywhere. Um, we've got some of our regulars and, and some others. Uh, and if, uh, Eric, just before we jumped on, Eric was was noticing that his the sync of his audio might be a little bit off. So we hope you'll forgive us if that is the case. But uh, nobody's going to be looking at that because this is amazing. I, I think what you have in store is going to be pretty awesome. Plus, when I get much smaller, um, it won't be more as noticeable when I shrink down here in just a second. Um, and then yeah. also, I'll try to give um, some pauses too as well, so that we can, if there is that a little bit of a of a sync, make sure that everyone's still staying with us. So, doing our best here as always. Um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and switch my screen. <laughs> do it. And people are saying it looks pretty all right. So. We're all right, great. all right, all right. I like to quote Matthew McConaughey. So one thing I'm going to do differently too here, <laughs> folks, is that uh, some people ask Tyson likes to model with a, you see him sometimes with a stylus and you're like, what are you doing with a stylus? And he has a, a Wacom, I say Wacom, but it's proper as Wacom tablet. I actually have a Cintiq ta a display tablet. I think this is gonna be fun. We're gonna do something a little bit different today because the Nightmare Before Christmas, not just that, but Tim Burton's style is very loose. It's very, I don't want to say organic, but very off kiltered. And I think coming in with a freehand tool is something I'm going to try to really push. And uh, so we've got a little bit of a, we're going to try something a little different here today. And hopefully, hopefully you, you, you enjoy it. So like everything I here, sorry, go ahead, Tyson. Yeah. Interrupt me anytime. Cause I just kind of talk and I don't, you know, always let you no. have a chance to speak. Jump in. I just want to express because I, I, I expect this will be the, the, the same for everybody. But <laughs> I am really interested to see how you're going to tackle this one. This is going to be a challenge, or at least I would think so. So, yes. Take us yes, there, thanks. Eric. I'm excited. Yes, thanks for the vote, for making me nervous. Okay. So that's a great question, actually, because that's where we're starting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a reference image for those that were on the forum uh, this morning. They may have seen me post it because uh, you got to start with something. You can't just pull this from memory as, much, as many times as I've seen the film. I can't. I, there's no way I could do this from memory. We need something. Now, the other challenge is for those that have seen the film, Jack's house doesn't actually show up all that often. And not, when it does, it shows up sometimes really small and only for a split second. There's only a couple of scenes where you can get a sense, really a good sense of of what it looks like. 
So what I found is that there's a lot of creators, really awesome creators out there that have either built maquettes or they have a tutorial on YouTube or something like that where they show how to build it. So that's awesome. We're gonna use a combination of some stills from the movie, some hand sketches that some other artists have done and um, some physical models that some other artists have built. And I think between those, they're gonna, you're gonna see they're all a little bit different. And that's okay because what we're going to do is we're uh what i'm going to do here is put my own spin on it we're going to and it'll be my version of jack's house so so and we all want to see here. Eric's version that's that's what we're here we for see. so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and start by bringing in that image that i just showed on the screen and i'm going to scale it up here jack is about a little bit bigger than a person if i measured him he's my scale figure I feel like he's taller than a real person. So if I measured him, he's actually, he's about six feet. So I must have scaled him. No, he's nine foot. Okay. So he's taller. I think he's taller than me if I was, if I met him in real life. Oh yeah. He's the slender man. So I'm looking down today because I am using my Cintiq tablet. As you know, anything about a Cintiq, they kind of lay flat. So I will be looking down. So don't be offended if I don't make eye contact with you um, the entire time. Although when Bob Ross, I like to reference him when he paints, he has to look at his canvas. So you just hear his soothing voice and see his awesome afro. And you're right, having off that. Yeah, I'm putting this in here and I'm going to go ahead uh, because I'm going to need to reference it. So I just want to put it in the model. It just makes it a little bit easier. I might pop it up on the screen because that way, and I'm just going to put it on. Let's go ahead and take a couple minutes here as we get started to set up I like to work with tags. So I'm going to just put this on an X layer. X stands for like X reference. X meaning like, like in AutoCAD for my AutoCAD days. And then I'll come over here to, I'm old school. I use entity info. I don't know, because I know that there's new tags tools. I know I do it the old fashioned way. I, I, I use entity info to assign it. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and set up a scene here really quick. I have a shortcut for that. And this is going to be my trace scene, in which case I'm going to want to also set up a style, which is going to be a trace style. So I've got a trace style and I've got a trace scene. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. So when I'm going to go ahead and do, when I want to do my drawing, I can just go click on here and I'll be in my trace. And then when I want to see how things are looking, I can go ahead and add another scene, pop out, get my default style. You get the idea. So let's go ahead and change the camera to perspective and update that. That is going to be my view scene. I did a skill builder on this. So for those that want to see a little bit more detail about how and why that works, trace and view. Awesome. Looking good. You, you're you really oh, good, did. Eric. Uh, if anybody has not watched you before, you're really good at uh, setting up a lot of this stuff at the beginning. You, you think ahead in that way. Thanks, Tyson. I'll take that. Yeah, I appreciate that. So what we need is a, a sort of a, the, a platform for his house. We need sort of something for where we're going to start. This is kind of what I'm thinking is the landing. So I'm going to go back over to my trace image. Uh, what did I do? What did I do wrong? I went to trace. Did I update the wrong one? I updated the wrong one. Oh, I'm sitting here talking. This is why you can't talk and do this at the same time, because what you're going to do is you're going to mess up. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and try that one more time. Let's make sure that works. So I want a trace view where I can see my 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 uh, my image, my reference image, and then I want a view scene in which case my reference image disappears and I can see how it's progressing. That's kind of the goal. That's the intent here. If I did this correctly, okay. So moving on, moving right along. You guys, seen the Muppet? Anyone seen the Muppet movie here in the group? It's a great song. Okay. So that's it. That's <laughs> don't start me, Eric, or I will start singing that song. <laughs> it's when they're in the Studebaker, right? Do you remember? Yeah, it was oh, totally. All right. So this is okay. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to start with the walls. I'm going to work my way. I like being landscape and urban design. I usually tend to start with the ground and work my way up. So that when I'm thinking about this, uh, let me talk a second. Actually, let me slow down. Let's talk a second about some of the elements that we're going to be that I'm going to need to be thinking about. First of all, we've got this gate that is very thin, very made of, you know, bendy metal. Uh, it's, uh, so thinking about how to do that, very hand drawn. Again, the Cintiq will come in. I've got these cats, the stone wall. There's a wall and there's the columns. So those are sort of two separate elements. 
you've got this spiral, not spiral, but this kind of wonky bending staircase. Again, not only does the staircase bend itself, but the stairs them are not perfect either. So they also bend and wiggle. So a lot of stuff we're going to do today is going to be stretching, scaling, flipping, you know, distortings to get that kind of look. And then of course, we're going to get to this little platform, this zero gravity defying, I'm going to call this his garden, the house sits on. Uh, which is built made of a stone wall with some boulders underneath it for support. Obviously, those boulders are are there for support underneath there. Dead trees, and then we start the house structure. And then I don't even want to think about this tower because I doubt we're going to get there. But if people are patient and willing to go a little past time, maybe we can. <laughs> so I'm oh, just going to get to it. Get to it. I'm just going to get to it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is these walls. So this is where I'm going to switch. If this works, okay, let's try this. First time I've ever done this, I'm switching my screen. So what you should be able to see is Jack here. It's going to, he's here for moral support. I have my pen. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trace um, this wall here. So the wall has this really cool stone look. So I'm going to use the freehand tool, and I'm just going to draw something like that. And I'm going to, I want the the base of the wall to be straight. So I'm going to switch to the line tool. So when I do this, you're going to see that I actually, uh, let me make my, sorry, let me change the, under my trace view, let me change the color of my lines and bump my profiles up just slightly. I think that'll make it, is that a little bit easier to see? That should, that should help a, a, a okay. bit. So what I'm doing is I'm using the freehand tool. So I'm using the keyboard shortcut. And then I'm just, I'm literally just kind of, I'm just, I, I want this kind of wiggle and bend. And I'm, I'm just kind of following the lines that I see sort of in the stone wall itself right now. And I'm not being perfect about it because that's not the point, of course, with the freehand tool. Now, Here's a little pro tip, as I learned uh, from Daniel Tall. Pro tips are with the freehand tool, when I do this, if you try and make it perfect, oftentimes, like this, I'm trying to connect this line to here. If you think you're connecting, what you'll see, and let me switch back to my main screen so you can see this a little bit better now. I just wanted you to see how I was doing. You can see that when you use the freehand tool, it, it often almost fails to snap something about the way that it does the smooth. Smoothing. So what I want to recommend is if you're going to draw these, if you're going to use the freehand tool, come in and, and go past the line. So in this case, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this, that. I'm actually going past. So I'm not trying to snap it. So you might say, what are you doing? I'm making the stones. I was thinking about last night how to do this. And I was like, how am I going to make these stones? How would you do it, Tyson? Um, <laughs> I, mean, I there's would so not many, I love, you know, this. there's so many ways <laughs> you would not attempt this. So I'm I'm going fairly quick here uh, because I I think that what you're getting is you're kind of you're going to see the point here is that let's put some more stones down there. Okay, so so these are my stones. I'm just kind of making them sort of random here. And then unfortunately, because I'm drawing really fast and I'm, I'm extending the lines over a little bit, I'm going a little bit over on purpose. Okay, I don't wanna to do too many because it's gonna to take too long. So now what I wanna do is just take that eraser tool and I wanna just trim off all of these stray lines. I think, does TomTom's cleanup, would TomTom's cleanup make this faster? If he makes that it, stray lines? It'd you know? be worth the try if you grouped this, but. I when unless you have full geometry sometimes it doesn't work um oh, i just did it oh did you see that i'm gonna hang on i'm gonna do that again okay sorry tyson while you were talking uh, okay let's do that again see all these boom. little straight see all these little stray lines i was deleting these one at a time like this with the eraser well tyson just did a great recommendation you should be able to group it clean up erase stray edges all of those overlapping edges are now psh, kaput, they're gone. Nice. So in a way it's like, okay, that was pretty fast actually to draw the wall, but you're you're all thinking the same thing I'm thinking. I was thinking last night when I was having a panic attack about how I was gonna do this today. 
is now I need to make this into 3D. <laughs> so what would be a good way to um, switch back to my black line work? That was just for my trace line work. So I'm ready to make this into 3D. I, I found that there's this kind of a fun, this is kind of a cheat. So let me show you a, 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 one way to do it. There's so many different ways to do it, obviously. Um, there's one called SketchUp for you makes an extension called offset. It's a multiple offset. So I thought, what if I take all these stones and I just offset them all at once? And that would be the grout. Um, so, so I'm going to go ahead and try that right now. I'm going to save it first. So I beat, hopefully I beat people in the chat. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I'm going to enter. This looks crazy. It looks crazy. That's why I'm saving it because before I run any crazy commands, I'm going to enter negative because I'm offsetting inward one for negative one inch. That's too big. I also noticed this line, this face right here didn't get offset, but that's okay. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for close enough. So here's what I can do is I noticed with the offset tool when I was playing around with it is that it doesn't let you do less than an inch. Maybe that's, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but um, I found that if, if that's the problem, just scale it up, work bigger, and then enter negative one inch and look at that grout line. If that grout line is too thin, you can go negative two inches. Um, and that looks, that looks better. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what that offset looks like. Whoa, what did I just do? Negative two inches. Don't touch it. Hit enter. <laughs> so see what I did there now? I have the uh, Now I have the stones separate from the grout. And this is where I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to switch back to my Cintiq screen because I want to show you how I use the tablet um, sometimes to also speed the process up here. So what I'm going to do is just paint bucket. I'm going to show you why I'm doing this because I could use the select tool. Ooh, I got a stone I don't like here. So I'm going to switch to the freehand. And I'm just going to do this one. I'm just going to switch to the line tool. That one didn't take for some reason. Yeah, so curious gonna... why it cut that one at that yeah, angle. Let me... Yeah, I don't know why that one didn't work, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, Wonky yeah. is good in this. Okay, so you might be like, well, why are you doing this, Eric? You're, I mean, I know you like hot pink, and I do. I love hot uh, pink. Yeah, so. and who doesn't? Let's just say that. Okay. The reason why is because I want to select all of these, and I might have to select them more than once. And I know that there's an extension where you can repeat your selection. But in this case, what I want to do is I actually have a shortcut for select all on the same material. So I'm actually just going to hit Shift M for, for material. So watch uh, if you can see that. If you can see what happens here, if I hit Shift M, it selects all of them. And then I can just go ahead and copy those stones out of the grout. So I'm going to switch back so you can see my main screen. I just wanted you to be able to see how I was doing, how I was using the paint bucket with the, with the, um, with the, uh, the, the pen. So now I've got these individual stones all so, separated pretty quick. Just to be sure, Eric, was that a was that a plugin I might have missed, or was that a native command to be able to select by material? That's a native command. So I you can right click it and say select all on the same material, which is what I normally do. But when I was doing this last night, I was like, is there a shortcut for this? You can make it a shortcut. So select all on the same material and a shortcut is very very fast way to select. So it's faster for me to paint bucket and then hit Shift M. Than it is for me to actually hold shift and go click 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 i love it man That's another way brilliant. to do that too see the problem is is i can't use the select inverse because you can see that the grout lines because i drew those inner lines um let me see do i have my profiles on for my styles i do okay so those grout lines, I couldn't do the select inverse because the grout lines aren't solid they're individual grout lines so anyway that's why i did it that way so i don't need this so i'm going to group it and hide it just in case and then I do need, if the hot pink is offensive to anybody, we're going to go back. Um, we'll just go ahead and give it a, we'll go ahead and just give it a, a nice gray color. So now I've got a shortcut for uh, Fredo's joint push pull. So shift J. So once I've selected all of these, shift J. Oh, it didn't work today. Oh, <laughs> all right, we're going to do it the old fashioned way. Uh -huh. Always, always when you're live, always when you're live streaming. Joint push pull. And I'm going to give this a thickness. I don't really care what the thickness is exactly because I can change it. I love watching this auto-populate like I'm doing magic. Okay. 
that looks good. Now, there's also something that's kind of neat too I, um, with how to make this not look so smooth. So if I select just the top face, sorry if I'm like, like the instructor in me like has to talk through every step, but I'm totally happy to just do it if, if that's better for people. Carry on, carry on. This one's called oh, wow. extrude push pull. So extrude push pull, look what it's doing. It's, extru it's actually extruding um, a, a face for the stone as I'm push pulling. That's also in part of um, Fredo's joint push pull. So it's extruding, it's offsetting, and then it's extruding. So kind of like auto fold, or uh, is that right? Auto fold? Yeah. Like with the native tools? Yeah. So it's. So you can uh, see now I've got something that I think looks like a stylized rock wall. Mm -hmm. Window, uh, I'm going to go soften. I'm going to use soften edges quite a bit. So I'm just going to leave that up. And. If I, want, if I don't like that sort of hard edges, I can just go ahead and soften those out so that I get a little bit of the shadows. Um, okay, what would you say? Does that kind of feel like a, if I go back to my trace scene and you look at, and you look at that rock wall? Yeah, looks kind of cool. I'm just gonna delete that. I don't think I need that anymore. All right, so now the trick is gonna be, let's go ahead and we need this to be a curve. So there's a lot of ways to do this as well. I found that if I draw a circle, and I'm going to make it sort of about the size, and find the midpoint, and then I draw that same line, a line on the red axis, then I can use Shape Bender. So Chris Fulmer Shape Bender. What I want to do is I actually don't want this. I want to leave an opening. So I kind of want this to be less than half a circle because the reason why is because if you were to ring this around his little um, pad, it would you would want the opening in the gate. So we want it sort of a little bit less than what would be considered a half a circle for this arc as our reference arc. So just bear with me here if this works. Extensions. We're all holding try our not breath. To use ex <laughs> extensions. Are you? Is everyone holding their breath? Oh, yes, okay. I am. I'm speaking for everyone. <laughs> Shape Bender is funny how it works. It wants you to select a line on the red axis first. Somehow that's just what it uses in its code. And then it wants you to select the arc. And then it's going to give you a couple of toggles. It's going to ask you about the projection. So if I zoom out a little bit, and I have to be careful, right now it's projecting the opposite. So those cool, smooth, those cool extruded stones that I made, they're facing the opposite way. So I think if I hit down on the arrow key, nope, that wasn't it. I think if I hit up on the arrow key, it's going to. Oh, which one is it? That's not it. This is where I get confused because I, I may have to try this. I may get out of that. Let's try this the other way. Maybe I can try this the other way. Oops, sorry, sorry. No, I say because we were just in. <laughs> We were just in, in in Vancouver for base camp and I still it's still it's with me. Okay. Do you use Shape Bender a lot, Mr. Tyson? Do I you feel like you get success with it, or does it always confuse you the way it confuses me? Oh yeah, no, you're you're spot on with like my experience too, which is I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna use it, hit some arrow keys and undo, and by the fourth or fifth time I might get what I'm looking for. Yeah, so so that was not it. That was not that was not it. So <clears throat> let's see here. I'm gonna try flipping this around 180, and maybe that maybe that way we can. So something I'm doing something out of order, which I hate when you do it once as a test and it works, and then you do it again and it doesn't. Yeah. This Fulmer tools shape bender. It says pick the red axis, pick the stone. I know it's possible though because I did do it. That's the wrong way. I want it to flip the other way, not that way. Let's hit enter. I can change this. Uh, what I want is the stones facing out, as you know, when it does the, that was my problem is, okay, there they are. Do you see that now? So if I flip this around, <laughs> I know yeah. the scale looks stretched and stuff, but there it is. Uh, that's yeah. that's kind of what I'm trying. That's kind of trying to, uh, what I want it. So what now I'm going to go ahead and pop into plan view. 
because the, oh, I want to know which side is the gate side. The gate side is the tall side. So I'm going to do the right side first. So many times when I do these things, like even when I teach live to like college students, I have, I'd say, bear with me, you know, just you bear with me. Like I, I'm getting to the point. We're going to get there together. So what's cool about this is that you know, I'm just using scales and stretch and stuff like that to manipulate this. I want to make sure this is a component. It is. So I'm just going to flip this around. Um, scale by negative one. I know some people use mirror extensions and stuff, but I'm I find that just you know using the scale by negative one seems to work okay for me. So the question here is how big do we want the opening to be to his house? I'd say oh no between little, that big and that big. A... Okay, <laughs> so. I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing this gray color and we're going to go ahead and i'm going to call that because i just want to move on so i think you get the idea as far as the technique is concerned yeah, and man. yeah carry on that so obviously that's, there that's a great start and if you wanted to do the grout if you didn't like seeing through the grout you could do you could just take this wall here and just offset a very thin line that would sort of represent the inside of the wall. I'm going to take that, copy it, paste it in place, and I'm going to lift that up. And I'm going to lift that up to um, to there. And let's see here. I'm going to. I, I think maybe that's worth doing. I want to keep going because uh, we've got so much else to do. That the wall was supposed to be. I mean, I know the wall is pretty complex, but it's. It was supposed to be something really quick. All right, so group that. Get rid of that. There's my group byte, remember, from for those that were part of our Tanner Springs park. They learned that I like to use my group by delete technique. It's very handy. Yeah, it can come in handy. All right, now I'm just... Well, I don't know. I, that's not good enough for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I am going to spend another minute and I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Okay. So that's a way basically we can put the grout in is just to have um, a circle that sort of just use it. And if I wanted to spend more time, I could make that perfect, but I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to group all of these together and call that, call that done. Do it. I, I so, think we get the idea. Let's go ahead like, and it looks good. Get the idea. Okay, so let's go back to our reference image here and see what we want to do next. I would do the stairs next. What do you think, Tyson? Or should we do the columns in the gate and finish this off? I feel like that because the columns in the gate enclose it. So I feel like I almost want to do the stairs and the base of the house and then maybe enclose it, right? As opposed okay. to having closing it in. Can we do yeah. that? Yeah, let's, let's see the stairs. We've got a lot of people commenting, you know, stairs are a, a mild code violation. Um, the uh, the building department in Jack Skeleton Land are, is, is going to have a, have a say. Uh, well, it's, it's Halloween Town, uh, to correct you. Uh, there, <laughs> um, but... That's totally fair. <laughs> I, I'm not sure there's any, I'm not sure there's any codes at all. Um, in Halloween Town, to be honest, I, I don't know. I don't see anything that's sort of being done to code. But it also has like um, so. What I'm doing here, you can see what I'm doing here. I don't need to explain it. Okay, I'm just kind of using almost like the vertex tools technique, like when you're doing quad modeling. Is I'm just kind of pulling. I'm, I'm really just wanting this front face because I don't really need the back one because I'm going to replace it with some stones. So I really kind of want um, a, a face and a line that I might use. So I don't even need this to be, I don't know why I drew it so thick. Probably just because staircases have a certain thickness to them. Okay. So that looks cool from a tilt perspective, but now we need it to be... I need it to sort of jog a little bit. 
So I'm just using the same, I'm, I'm using a left, I'm using the left select to select the joint. And I'm using kind of like the vertex tools technique, which I actually don't know how to use vertex tools. So shh, don't tell Tom Tom. <laughs> Tom Tom um, doesn't know how to use his own tools. Don't worry. <laughs> and then I'm kind of, <laughs> all right, it makes me feel a little bit better then. The other thing too, is you can scale. So by holding the modifier, you can make the stairs wider. Like if I wanted to make it wider at the base here, I could come underneath and go scale. I might just hide my walls just for right now. So what I wanted to do is just kind of create this. Um, I don't know if this is, hope you're kind of getting where I'm, where I'm going with this. Now I could rotate too, but I don't know, that might mess me up too much. So I don't know that that's gonna help me. And I'll show you why in a second, because I actually have um, an idea for how I might be able to do the stairs. What I really need is this line here. I kind of want that guideline right there. So even if I turn that off, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So now I need to build a step. And like everything in Halloween Town, it's not code. As Tyson so correctly pointed out, I'm not even gonna care if it's six inches or not because <laughs> Oops, didn't mean to do that. I want to, wanted to just group the stair. I'm going to make that a component because I'm going to have more than one of them. And I'm going to paste this top part on top because I want this. I want the top of the step to be sort of slightly different from the bottom of the step. So I've got the step. And this is where it gets fun because with um, this is not how I'm sort of used to modeling, but uh, this is where I feel like game designers maybe are really good at this where you can start really just kind of playing with stuff and tweaking. You grab these, grab an edge, and you just kind of move it like this, you know? Mm. And I think you did a really great job, Tyson, on your stylized. You did that stylized, you know, kind of lighthouse that I helped a little bit on towards the end when we decided to render it. <laughs> I you brought it up. I, I, I wasn't going to bring up that, you know, we took three live sessions to finish that one. And you're, you're going to try to do a whole stylized house in one. So you're, you're kind of one upping us, Aaron and I. No, <laughs> no way, because I'm not going to, I'm not, there's no way I'm going to be able to, to do this view axis. I don't like my axis on. Sorry. I'm going to turn it off. Thank you. So, so now I've got my step component. And I want to use this corner here. This is where I'm going to change the axis to this corner. Only I'm going to have to do this like six times. You'll see because um, I'm going to use the path copy extension to string this, this component up this path. So if I hide this here just for a second, um, this is what I want to do. I want to basically weld this path and then I want to I want this to follow that path. So let's if I'm successful, uh, we'll be able to do that. Path copy that one. You can see the spacing is 10 foot. I'm going to try six inches. That's too tight because again, I'm not building this to code and Jack Skellington's nine foot tall anyway. Nine inches, 10 inches. I don't know what the number is. 11. I, I, I want them kind of touching. I don't really want them floating, so I kind of want to go 10.5. Yeah, 10.5, okay, wow. So see what I did there? What it did though, is it didn't give me, it didn't follow my curve. If I turn this back on, you'll notice that it didn't follow the profile. Um, there may be ways to solve that. It's following, it's just, it's sort of interpolating where that axis is. So in this case, what I would do is come in here and just grab some of these and just go in and manual because that's okay anyway well because it's so we want things to be all tweaky so if, if it's not perfect um i'm just going to go in and take some of these i actually want that kind of level of control where the stairs aren't all perfect so yeah i'm going to do that for some some of these um yeah, and, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna even, I'm gonna make them even more kind of wonky here in just a minute. I'm just gonna try to get this transition to work. So I felt that was faster. Tyson, do you feel like that was maybe the best, a good way to have done that? 
I, I'm I do always think willing this is, to learn. I think this is a, a, a really interesting way to to start the process. And then, like you say, you sort of just randomize it. Um, I kind of want to go away. I just I, wanted to. Yeah, I want to. You use path copy and that did what you needed to do. And I'd be curious to try both component stringer and path array because mm. those will do similar things and it may not make any difference, but it would just be one of those things that I want to walk away from this and go experiment a little bit and be like, do, does any one of them give you options that a different one doesn't? I don't know. That's just where my mind's going right now. I think the thing is with some of these things is I'm all about, you know, measuring 19 times and then cutting once. So put the work in up front. The problem is, though, is that sometimes, you know, especially when you're in a deadline, it's like, wait, you know, I don't want to spend 45 minutes trying six component, six extensions when I can just do this one, even though it requires a little bit like ten, like six minutes of manual adjustment. It's like, I know I can get it. I can string them in a in less than a minute. And then it takes maybe five minutes of adjustment. It's like, mm -hmm. if I played with other extensions and I totally agree with your approach, Tyson, don't get me wrong there. I'm just saying that for me, it's like, that's where that sort of time benefit. If you have the time to learn those different methods, definitely do it. And sometimes we don't have that luxury. Oh yeah. All right. So, so that's not great. You can still sort of see the shifts. So what I'm going to do is take it a step further. Um, I'm going to come back up here to my friend, Chris Fulmer. I can say that because he is my friend. We went to college together. So I'm going to use scale and rotate. I like to say that as if somehow that builds my street cred. Like, oh yeah, I, <laughs> I actually, I actually gave Chris Fulmer drawing lessons. So clearly it didn't, um, ended up going into Ruby development. So none of my advice. Oh, no, no, I'm just, that's not true. He, he still paints a lot. He does, he paint. He paints, he, he does some cool stuff. Yeah. So what I'm doing with this one, this is um, scale, scale and rotate randomly. So what I wanna do is both make the steps a little bit bigger and smaller, and I wanna kind of kilt them. So, oh, hang on, before I do that though, remember how when I did the, um, if I show my component axis, so window, model info, components, show component axis. Okay, you remember I put it there and that was because I wanted to string from that line. So the problem is, is when you scale and rotate, oh no, that's not true. You can choose where you can either choose the axis or you can choose the center of the component. So if I wanted that to rotate from a specific point, I may want to change the axis before I do this. And what's kind of cool is that um, select all instances. What's his face? I think it's TomTom Tom. actually has <laughs> one called axis tools. Yeah. So I can change the axis on all of them and I can say I want to I want it to be um, center center and blue bottom, and I think that's actually a good place for most for most axes to be. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK for that. And what it's going to do is you can see if I put on X-ray mode, you can see what it did. It changed the axis for all of them. It put it in that center, and that was really really quick way to, to do that. So now I'm going to try Chris Fulmer's. Before you do, a couple people rotate. are worried. They want you to save. I'm not going to. <laughs> you rebel. <laughs> Like no, first of all, it's because I just did. Um, I save, I save uh, every, I save probably every six or seven minutes. Um, one and three. All right. Did, so, did you see? Did you see that? Should, uh, I, should I do that again? No, no. I mean, I'm gonna do it. Again. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> okay. So, I'm gonna go extensions, Chris Fulmer tools, scale and rotate randomly. I want to say by axis because I just put the axis exactly where I wanted it. I'm going to say 0.9 for the minimum, 1.1. I want it a subtle. I don't want it a huge scale difference. I'm going to go minimum rotation of one degree, maximum of three degrees, and click OK. And you can see the difference there. Now, lastly, if I wanted to be, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my act. I don't need to see that component axis anymore. That was just, um... lastly, if I wanted to, um, I would scale, I would start to scale the steps as they reach the top. So I might take some of these and actually go in. If I really wanted, if I was really being picky about control, I might, you know, come in and make some of the ones. Um, can I do a group scale? It's going to scale from the center point on all of these, isn't it? You can always not sure group and then change the axis if you want to change where it scales from. Yeah. 
Oh, excuse me. And that's true. You can you can stretch this way, and that way you wouldn't be scaling the vertical. You'd only be scaling the horizontal, which is probably a better way to do it. If, if you hold the modifier, I'm going to stretch these, and I'm scaling these by just the horizontal. The reason for doing that is because I kind of wanted the stairs at the bottom to be a little bit wider. And then as they go up, you'll notice, if you look at it in plan view, you'll notice that they kind of taper. But I digress. I think that's good enough. Select all instances and group that together. That we don't need, I'm gonna keep it, but I don't think we need that right now. So let's see how we're doing. That is looking awesome. Um, uh, a number of comments that the, that combination that you just did, uh, I think the combination of the array, the combination of uh, the origin for the axis and being able to scale and rotate randomly. Yeah, uh, got some good vibes. Thank you guys, because if I, I, first of all, I, um, I survive on positive feedback and reinforcement. So if anyone says anything negative, I will cry on camera and Tyson knows cause he's seen that. Oh, so, it's ugly, ugly so, crying. It's ugly crying. So <laughs> you don't want, we don't want to go. We don't want to go. This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> I, you carry on. I, I'll make a comment again to this idea. I think. Um, component stringer has an option to taper the components as you go. And, and again, I'm not suggesting at all that, um, it, again, it's one of these things that for me, if I were to go off and try this, I might try and see what that would do. It, it, it's kind of uniform, so you'd still have to do what you're doing where then you'd randomize it. I just, it's another one of those things to be like, huh, what combination of plugins will We'll get you across the finish line. You know what? I would love, I would love to. Um, yeah, I would love to learn more, more extensions. To be honest with you, I try, I, t I try, I have like my ten go tos, and I know that there's so many good ones, and I just, I just don't. Speaking of go tos, I'm going to launch another one. So just because I'm landscape, so um, you know what I mean? I just say that like, if when you're doing woodworking, you're doing architecture, you're doing industrial design, organic design, there's very, very specific extensions for that workflow. So I know that my world is sort of some stuff that I use is more obviously in, in my world. Okay. So speaking of organic, I'm going to, I'm going to make a boulder and I just want to, um, I just want to, oh, why is it previewing the boulder? I don't want to see the preview. It never previews. Oh, is it because it was a group? I believe so. Oh, do I always do it on raw geometry? Did I just learn something here? <laughs> okay, that's my boulder. Looks like an egg. Okay, make that a component. I don't care. I'm fast and loose here. Um, ooh, this is where like scatter might come into play. But to be honest with you, I found that sometimes with something like scatter is that I end up... Um, I end up spending so much time, like still, like you know, adjusting things. Flip along components red. Flip along components green. Um, what I mean is that, like scatter will like scatter stuff. But if you want really precise control right now, like what I'm doing right now is laying out these rocks, and I'm probably not going to do all of them because this might be something I come back and do at the end, depending on how much time we have. But oh, you know, it's a good, an easy way to do this. I'll show you. Make this a component, and then uh, copy it. Flip it upside down. Okay. Take this rock. Copy that. Let's see here. How do I want to do this? This is the fun part. I get to think out loud here. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this, 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 that, and that. Okay. Enroth's extensions, Enroth's flat to plane. Okay. Oops. Okay. And then Enroth's base creator. Man, that Enroth. I swear she's clever whenever i whenever i meet people 
that are smarter than myself, which is constantly. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm just like, how do you how do you do it? So what I'm going to do is use I'm going to show off for the 2022. Some people don't know this one, but there's a stamp feature. Um, if you hold the modifier Option Alt uh, and you hold it again, that gives you that makes a co one copy and then it stops. And if you hold it again, so let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Move Option Alt option again and then a little stamp icon comes up at the end of the crosshairs and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click it i'm just going to click this somewhere here i'm going to see I, I hope this works i haven't actually tried this and i'm just going to go click 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 i don't need to say the click sorry no you need to sing them <laughs> clickety 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 <laughs> extensions chris fulmer tool scale and rotate randomly so you can see that i'm let's go 0.75 this time um and one and 30 and 300. okay oh i don't think this is going to work but i'm going to try it i'm going to drop those i'm going to grab those put them inside of the component. I'm working upside down because drop only drops down. You can't say push up, right? Because gravity doesn't work that way. So if you're ever gonna use the drop command and you wanna drop some stuff, you can flip your component upside down and then drop stuff onto it. And then you'll see next to it, because it's a component, it's actually gonna go, you're gonna see it's gonna go, it's gonna go backwards. Kind of like a, kind of like that scene from Inception when the, remember when they were fighting? And they oh, were fighting so cool. Them. Okay, so see what I did there? Now it shows up twice. One's going to go down and one's going to go up. So you don't even know what, which way is what. <laughs> Drop GC. Okay. So the problem is that they're all hitting. Um, problem is that they're, they're, all, they're all hitting each other. So um, I'm just going to actually just manually drop them in here. I wish there was a scatter could have been a good one to, to do this one on. I just don't, I don't, I feel like it's not very much fun for people to watch like scatter setups. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know if this is work. I don't know if this is saving me any any more, more time than just placing them myself. <laughs> I've run into that too. Drop is so cool, but then once you have overlapping geometry, it gets confused. Um, so, yeah, then you end up just being right. like, "Fine." I'm, I'm punting on this one. I am going to. I am going to do that i'm just going to stamp them and then i'll rotate them so that i don't need i'm just going to stamp them ready because i want to move on so uh, move copy modifier to stamp there it is okay so tyson you can tell us about maybe your weekend plans while i stamp some of these in here oh good i've been waiting to to share <laughs> is it snowing in Colorado right now? Uh, we did get some snow last night and yesterday. And um, thankfully, I think that's all we're going to have for a few days, which that's fine. Let it melt away. Um, I don't have plans, but we may put up some Christmas this next week because put that up a little bit early. That way it lasts a little bit longer. And uh, I still have young enough kids that they'll they'll kind of arm wrestle us into doing that <laughs> but uh yeah no no uh no big plans per se gonna eat ourselves silly late next week for those of us here in the states that do uh turkey day and, and in fairness uh to eric who will not be eating a turkey but will probably stuff himself silly I'm vegetarian so, for people who care, who care yep, about that kind of Eric thing. Eric is uh, eating healthier than All I am. Right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and come back to this later. So the point here is that I'm trying. I was trying to find a, a quick way to sort of scatter a bunch of boulders, but the reality is, is something like this is just it. It's so fine-tuned placement. Do you know? It's like it needs to be like each boulder needs to be there and then you want to scale it or stretch it. So like all of these ones down here on the ground, like I don't want them sticking out. So I have to sort of push them back in. Um, and then the ones that aren't that didn't make it need to be scaled back up. So this is just one of those things where it's like, OK, 
I think I just have to admit that, you know, to do something like this, it's okay to, yeah, it's okay just just spend the time to do it sort of the old fashioned way. The other thing too, is to think about if you are doing a camera angle or something like that, if you do, um, you also want to think about, of course, the, the angle of the camera, because if you, if you are only capturing a shot, you may only have to place one or two of these rocks. I'm, I, when I render, I'm like, I'm not modeling anything that I don't have to, because it just takes too long. So in some ways, um, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't do the work if you don't have to do the work. Okay. I'm going to call, I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that good. These rocks are, these clearly, this clearly is, where's Aaron? He's, he just did a framing one. So he knows a little bit about structural support. These are clearly um, holding the steps up. Okay, I'm moving on. <laughs> it looks pretty awesome. And, uh, and there, okay, okay. there's a great comment that just Let's... came in. Uh, I think it's so true. A good model is never finished. It is just abandoned. Ah. <laughs> That's true of a painting of many things. Okay. That is, okay. Let's look at my, sorry. Let's look at the reference image. Well, we're only an hour. Uh, we're an hour. I'm gonna. We're seriously gonna get. Oh, we had to, we're gonna make a decision as to whether we're gonna keep going or whether we're going to um, stop it. Because what I want to do is, I'm. I think I can build. I think I can build the rest of the base here in like the next ten minutes. Here, let's see if I can do it in, in the next. So there's a little. If I kind of zoom in closely, there's kind of a little rock wall that is like a stacked stone. So the same technique that we just did. And then there's some floating rocks that kind of support it, which I'll come back to at the end because we saw that that process took a little bit longer. And then we've got these columns and these cats. I do want to do um, I do want to do these cats and the gate because I have a fun technique for that. So I really want to kind of finish this off, and then we'll kind of see how far we can get up um, for the house. And I don't know, maybe I'll just do that in my own time on my Patreon. I don't have a Patreon channel, but <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I will after this. I don't know, but halfway through the gloves right. came off or the coat came off. So I, I think everybody better buckle in. Well, because I'm, I'm starting to feel the, I'm starting to feel the, the pressure a little bit. That's right. <laughs> I did this to myself, by the way. So anyone who's no need to feel bad for me. Okay. I know Tyson doesn't. <laughs> so let's go ahead and switch to my Cintiq mode. We're going to go ahead and draw. We're going to go ahead and draw some walls. So I'm going to do the same technique. This is kind of fun because we get to see it again. I want to do that, kind of to try to draw a straight line, draw a straight line, and then draw that and draw that. And then I'm going to do the same thing, that, 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 that. There we go. And then some of these I'll take out so it doesn't just look so even. And then a few of these I'll put back in. Whoops, F, Command F. Command F, that's my shortcut for freehand. Wait, 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 did I, did, did I hear that correctly? It's your shortcut for what? Freehand, did I say that weird? Oh, <laughs> probably everybody heard. I thought you said that's your shortcut for freaking out. <laughs> I'm like, that, that's just a constant <sighs> mode I have turned on. I don't need a shortcut. <laughs> that's so funny no staying cool under pressure man that's what we do at SketchUp <laughs> switch over to my for those that are offended by hot pink I'm going to switch over to cyan-ish color shortcut for there we go and I think that was it for my Cintiq. You didn't need to see any more than that. Unfortunately, my joint push pull um, shortcut wasn't working. So if I go to SketchUp, I did quit and restart it and rebooted this morning. So if I go shortcuts, joint, I can spell it right. Joint push pull. Yes. Yeah, it disappeared. Did anybody else do that? Okay, I'm going to, permission to complain, speak freely. Um, why do some of my shortcuts disappear when I've set them? I feel like once it's been set, it should be set. I'm going to, I'm going to. I don't know. That's a great question. 
There it is. So oh, wow. see, I just hit command a uh, shift J. So there it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same technique here that we've already done. Don't worry, I'm only have to do this one more time. Um, and then I'm going to come back up here. I don't have a shortcut for this. It's Fredo joint push pull, and it's called extrude push pull. And that just gives it that sort of thickness of the stone. That's a really interesting one. I I would never used the extrude push pull option, so that's that's fun. I learned something new. I've learned several things new, but that's one of them. Well, my rule has always been, as long as you've learned one thing today, I say that to my classes, my, my, I say it to my kids too. So as long as, I, as long as I was able to teach you one thing, I don't know, is that worth two hours of time? Maybe, I guess it depends on what the thing is, but I feel like that's worth your time. <laughs> Between my one thing and Tyson's witty commentary, it's worth your time. Well, we'll I, make this worth your time. I learned my one thing. I can I can bail out now, right? I'm I'm done. You're on your own. Oh, is that is that? Yeah, I guess that's fair. See ya, Tyson. Thanks all. <laughs> Thanks all. See you next. Oh, we won't see you next week though. <laughs> you don't want to bail right now, Tyson. So no, just, I'm just getting warmed up. I, I, I really am in suspense here, so I'll, I'll stick around. Sorry if I sorry if I move around a lot. I do that. I'm kind of always in and out. And I know for people, hopefully there's nobody that has like you know, where that, that gives them headaches or something like that. No, that's one of those things people gotta learn right away, yeah. You 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 navigate constantly. That's just the way it I'm goes. I'm constantly navigating. I'm constantly kind of spinning around here. All right, so this is not by any means perfect. If I wanted to get this right, I would obviously, you know, really spend some time on this and sort of create a corner joint for these stones and maybe even um, pull this up a little bit. The reason why it tilts like that is because I drew it. I drew it with the freehand tool, so it's got that wonky line. So what I'm going to do is just sort of compensate for that by using the um, using the inference. I'm using the arrow keys to inference lock it. One thing, and I'm going to say this right now because I'm a little upset by this. Um, my Fredo scale is license is not working right now, and I, I've put in I put a support ticket on Sketchucation. So maybe if there if anybody's watching from Sketchucation. Um, my Fredo scale, my Fredo round corner and Fredo scales aren't working right now, my license. And I have one. Oh, that is a bummer. Both of those could be useful for... Because both of those yeah. would be really, don't you think, yeah. for, for what we're doing here? So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, it's a little bit like I'm, um, it's not like I'm doing this with, you know, let's try flip along blue. Ooh, no. Um, it's not like I'm totally, like, um at a disadvantage, but I do feel like a little bit. Oh, why did I paint this blue? Didn't mean to do that. Okay, so that that was that. Um, let's go ahead and do the gate. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank and you. to Is answer any, any good... one of the questions that just showed up, yeah, Fredo scale, um, a number of Fredo's plugins are now purchase only. Some of his older versions of them you can still find for free. But uh, I mean, without directly plugging Fredo, they're uh, pretty worth it. But I think so. It almost looks like a Basquiat sketch, doesn't it? It's got it with the crown. It's Basquiat-esque, if that's a term. It is now. Does everybody know Basquiat? Uh, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, nope. <laughs> uh, I'll be the one. Dot... Go ahead. All right, look them. it up. That's your homework. All right, I'll, I'll go That's your homework. Up. That's your, home, your homework class is... I'm sure I'll be able to spell that right on the first attempt. <laughs> I don't see any bottom support in the gate. Do you think there's a bottom support? 
there is a bottom support. I'm I would give assume one so. Because there probably should be. Even even for the um the model, the stop motion version of this, or All right. would put that in. So I could follow the model version, or I could follow this hand this physical built model version. So either way, it's kind of the same idea though. And I'm just gonna do half the gate for obvious because it's uh, it's a gate. So Okay, so I've got, I went ahead and sketched it. So done with my freehand. Now, time for the fun part. It's all fun. All of this is fun. I have a shortcut for an extension called pipe along path. Does everyone does everyone know that one? If I take this and I go, oh, that one didn't. Oh, it took that one away too because I rebooted. Because I rebooted. Sketch So we're going to do pipe, pipe along path. There we go. Did you reboot before exiting SketchUp? That's just so curious. I don't lose shortcuts that often. I rebooted this morning, yeah, because I didn't want to do a live stream and you know have my computer not have been rebooted for you know for for two days. So I rebooted this morning. And I lost my. <laughs> my... Did Oops, um... that's too thick. So what pipe along path does really quick, just because um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just do this here. I'm just gonna say it once is that it's just an extension that basically turns a line into a tube. So you can choose how many edges you want. So you can do square, or you can do octagon, or you can do make it really smooth, and you can set the diameter, an inside or an outside diameter. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna work big. So I'm gonna scale this up as always, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of. I don't think that it matters, but I'm just going to play it safe and get rid of those interfaces. So if I select a line like this and I'm using a shortcut, Shift P, and let's say let's see what two let's say segments. I'm going to go with six, and inside diameter. Let's see what two looks like. That looks pretty good. I'm going to shrink this down though. So again, so I'm going to actually make that a little bit fatter and go with let's go with four. Okay, what were we going to say, Tyson? Oh, this is a, this could be a distraction. So carry on. You you were mentioning earlier because you're talking about the gate and whether you know how true it is to the image versus something else. But w weren't you saying earlier that even in the movie they had several versions of the house that weren't in fact identical that were shown in different. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like the they they had six, they had you know seventeen sound stages or something. They had thirty animators uh, or thirteen animators. They had so so they had different sets, different scales, you know, based off of um, what's how where it shows up in the scene and stuff like that. So um, it was one of those things where it's really that's why partly why it was kind of difficult to find um, to find that reference. I don't know why that didn't. Oh, I might. Maybe that was not connected. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make that a component, and then go 90, scale it back down, and I'm going to go into my plan view, which I do not have a shortcut for, which I should, or a scene setup for, and I'm going to set it right there. Oops. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what I could do? I'm going to. This is a component, so I'm going to set it inside of there. That way I only have to do it once. Where did it go? Did I not copy it? All right. Tried, I was trying to be smart. I was trying to save myself some time now to undo it. <laughs> it's okay, it's not. It's only one gate. So I wanna scale that to about what I think is the halfway point. Probably about there. Copy that over so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is tough because it's thin, so you gotta find that middle one, negative one. And I know it's still too big, but that's okay. I'm gonna all actually, you know what? There's columns or the columns are actually quite a bit taller, which need to fit in right here. I'm still probably gonna scale it down just a little bit though. So again, one thing I would probably do on something like this would be um, if I really wanted to, I would have drawn them separately. I wouldn't have made it a component. You know, I'm just kind of I'm trying to save myself some time here just for the sake of intents and purposes. What do you think? If I don't get that positive feedback, I'm quitting. I'm out of here. Oh man, no, we all love you, Eric. Oh, it looks great. No, not that doesn't sound gen. Um, that sounds <laughs> no, I'm oh, I'm okay. not. Okay, yeah. Let me let me let me turn up my my emotion filter here. 
Eric, no, man, that, that is beautiful. Oh, oh, wow. Like I, you just made my whole day. All right, that's even worse. Okay, never mind. Let's not do the positive. Uh, oh, see what you did there? It crashed. It. You takes it. What I was doing was I was saving and I was intersecting with model and I was exiting the component. So I may have just been doing, I may have just been doing, um, didn't, didn't let it finish its command before I was, uh, before I was trying to push it to do something else. Oh man, I thought I had saved it before, before I got to this point. Ah. Uh, Cause I said, I just said earlier when you said yeah. save, someone said save and I said, yeah. I save like every five or six minutes. Mm -hmm. That's annoying. Cause then nobody wants to see me redo this. It's uh, all right. Here's what we're going to do. Pipe long path. Love. It's, it's fairly quick. All right. It was fairly quick. Well. We can use this, um, oh, shift P. See what happened? My shortcut for pipe long path. Gone, when it quits. Uh, There's a bug. Well. That's a bug. But when it when it crashes, if you quit, I think it'll save. But yeah, when it crashes, then you're, <laughs> it will all. Oh, man. But. While you do that, I will share that several people have said, oh, no, you know, this, uh, this is very, very fun to see and a lot of interesting stuff going on. So good comments. Thanks, guys and gals. We're trying, trying to do something a little diff, you know, trying to push things a little bit, trying to push myself, trying to. What the, what the heck? What the heck, heck? All right. Oh, snap. And it's not like in the gate. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to move on to the house because we're just over halfway point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the house and we're going to come back to the gate. Because clearly it's the, the Disney gods. Do Disney still own? They still own it, right? Do they? Maybe. Uh, they, but yeah, they still their, the uh, their, their wrath is kindled and they're like, we, we really love our gate. It can't be replicated. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to steal from myself. Yes. Yes. So we can keep this show growing, going, growing, Should keep the show going. Okay. Turn all those off. I don't need any of that. I do need. To sh I do need my screen to be back to full screen. This desktop, by the way, in case anyone likes my desktop pattern, that was made in SketchUp. That was a 3D. Someone did mention that, actually. Like, that is, oh. that is very interesting. And uh, so if you bring that to a future how-to, that could be interesting, too. All right. Because I was because I was nervous about this session, I did um, I did play around last night. I don't I didn't work for too long. It was I did spend a couple hours just kind of playing around. That's that's how I figured out sort of the rock technique that I did. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, so I think hopefully so smoothly. Uh -oh. Okay, so I'm going to go extensions, materials, tools remo removed from selection. I'm going to grab this gray. And there it is. All right. So the cats, in case you're wondering, since I'm not going to do those, I just use the Cintiq. And this is why I love the, the combination of the Cintiq and SketchUp is because although I don't model everything in, in with the Cintiq, because it, it really does require that three button mouse, um, whenever I do anything that's organic or, or I'm tracing or, or has movement or wiggle to it, that the Cintiq just is a lifesaver for me. So that's where I got these cats from. Um, I did that. So you can see the gate. I already did the gate the same way. So we're going to go ahead and Go ahead and move on. That looks have great. A... Yeah, that looks great. Thanks, Tyson. Thanks, Tyson, for keeping me on. So let's kind of take a look at how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and pull up our reference image here really quick. OK, so if you kind of see, it kind of twists. It sort of starts to the right. It kind of turns to the left. It bends to the right. And then it kind of, and then you can see that the sort of platform kind of turns. 
a little bit more to the left. So when you're almost looking straight through the gate, you're kind of seeing the house almost at an angle. And you can see the model kind of captures that and the sketch kind of captures that. So you're almost you're looking at the house at, um, I don't want to say three quarter, but maybe that's three quarter. So when we model it, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not looking, we're not kind of looking at the house head on, we're looking at it sort of at three quarters. So that's pretty much where we're going to spend um, the energy is going to be on that left hand side, because that's what's going to show. And if I wanted to sort of exaggerate that, I would just rotate this and just kind of push that over a little bit. So that way, when you're in perspective mode and you're kind of looking up the gate, you're getting that sort of three quarter. And I might want to turn that a little bit more too, but let's get to it. That's what artistry is for. A bummer. You get to- uh, That's a bummer. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. I gotta, I gotta let it go. I gotta let it go. But it, it crashed on me and I don't like that. <laughs> oh, I think there's a lot of uh, sympathy in this crowd um anyone who uses extensions oh, yeah. knows that that's you're just playing with fire so so i don't know which house to use here because they all are going to be a little bit different but i can tell you one thing they have in common is that there's a front door um, the base starts pretty narrow and it tapers up as it goes out and it kind of does a little bit of a dog leg i don't know if that's the right term but you can see that it kind of jogs and then it steps and it kind of goes up and then there's a little balcony or a, um, that sort of overhangs above the front porch. So whether that's done as a flat with a little, um, uh, what do you call those windows? A dormer. And then there's, uh, and then of course there's, if you've seen the movie, there's this really cool, there's a spider um, that, you know, you pull the spider and that's the doorknob and there's an eyeball on the door. We'll see, those details will come later. And then, um, and then there's a window on that side before we get to the roof. So if we can, let's just sort of get that sort of framework of the house done. And for those of you that wonder why I model with a white background and not like a um, blue or a gray background, it's because I often view it in monochromatic mode. I often will have things that are colored, but I will like to either view it or sometimes in order, especially when I do shadow studies and stuff, I like to see the shadows on black and white. So I, I leave my background white intentionally um, because I like to use the hidden line style, the monochromes, not monochrome, because that's reverse faces, but hidden line style. So a little fun fact. And Eric, you're nothing if not about style. Yeah, style. Style points. Style point. Um, all right, so let's, let's do this. Moving right along. Don't start singing. OK. <laughs> so I'm there's right. kind of cool ways to do this. You, you can either, if I wanted to distort this, I could either just move this here, or you can select this and scale. So that moving that edge or scaling, the thing I like about the scaling is the moving, you have to select the edge and you can only scale that edge. But if I, if, uh, if I scale the whole thing, I can either make the whole thing bigger, in which case I get a taper from the center by holding the modifier, which is kind of what you see with, I think what you see with, with Jack's house. And then, um, so, or you can just use the sides, you know what I mean? So I, I like the kind of the scale rather than the, um, oops, I don't need to group that yet. I do want to scale it as I think it's too big, but that's the cool thing is work, we're working individually. So now I wanted to show you, let's, let's build the body up a little bit. And I'm sorry if I have to, I don't know what the best way to do this, if it's to do it in the model or if it's to do it with the reference image, but I am going to kind of pop around a few times. You can see that it sort of um, steps back. Okay, here we go. It kind of goes up and it leans back and then it steps and then it steps one more time. So that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing right now. So this is that kind of step. And then I think, and I'm using the push pull tool. And I think this one's a little bit shorter. So I don't think that one's quite as big. And that one sort of steps just a little bit like that. I think that's kind of the shape. I'm even if it's not, I'm I'm gonna roll with that. And I think this is where the balcony is gonna be. So so I have to leave this line here because if I delete it, I'll lose that face because you, you can because I distorted it, right? So I pulled that out a little bit. Or what I could do is I could also scale that out if I wanted to as well. There's no way for me to know how to do that exactly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll just leave it like that. So this is what I was thinking of doing, and I don't know how to do this, but I want to do these boards that are like off kiltered, you know, as they go up. So I was thinking, I'm just going to group this for right now so that it doesn't stick together. 
I was thinking of making a component like this, and I've done this before, like when I'm doing terrain, when I want to do contours. I would just copy this up at a set interval. Um, call that two foot, one foot. Let's see what that looks like. Sure. One foot. Let's do that. One foot times 10 times 13. Right. And then now that's fine, but those those don't those are all straight and flat, right? So um, what I was thinking about doing is if I take one of these and I move that up a little bit and I move this up, then I can use select all instances. Again, we're using the same sort of three extensions, which is crystal Mars tool, scale and rotate randomly. And I want the minimum scale to be 0.8, 1.1, minimum rotation, oh, I don't know, 30 and 300. Let's see what happens. That's the numbers I use. Oh, you know what happened there? Access tools. I need to set the, I need to set the, um, I either need to tell Chris Fulmer's tools to use the center, or what I need to do is come in and use access tools to replace the center. Um, so let's try it again. I've never used this origin uh, plugin. That that's a pretty interesting one. So see what it see what it did there. So when it when it randomized them, it randomized them from the center, not from the corner. Yeah. So so what's what it's going to do is if I did this right, I would go into this group. I would say intersect faces with model. I would say select all of these instances, group them, hide them because I might need them, and then now you're getting this. Now if that's too much wiggle. Um, that's because, um, when I lifted that, I lifted it a little bit too high, but I'm going to go ahead and run with it. So I don't know why this one didn't connect. It might be because the component was just slightly too small. So I'll just manually connect that one and I'll just kind of look around to see if there were any that didn't connect or if any overlapped each other where they shouldn't have. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to worry about the back cause you're not going to see it. So this is kind of a fun part here. This is something that I was thinking about is, well, how that's great, but if I turned my shadows on or I turned my edges off, I wouldn't see any of that detail. So I thought about taking maybe some of these boards like this and then using that joint push pull. Sketch up preferences, shortcuts, joint, joint push pull, shift J. So if I do now grab those and go shift J, I think I can do more than one. And I just pull that board out just slightly like that. I can start to give it, um, I can start to give it a little bit of texture. So I might not do all of them. So I might just do a few of them just to give it so it doesn't feel so flat. And then, and then, you know, I may, I don't know if I, so. We'll just do that to a few of them like that. So I can do more than one at a time, which is cool. That is great. And yeah, totally. Whoops. I think we can see where you're going. How far. Yeah. All right. So the cool thing about that is that, um, so even if I am just because I'm a visual learner, if I turn all my edges and profiles off, even if I turn my shadows on, you're going to get that. That's, that's what I'm looking for is that even if you rendered it, you know, you're going to get that sort of um, wonkiness will still show up. And I think that's that's why I'm excited about that. So, All right, so let's do a door. Because we want wonky. Looking back, at our, looking back at our reference images, each door looks a little bit different, but I'm just going to go with this. It's an arch over the door, and it's got, it's almost like in a coffin shape. You know, it sort of tapers as it goes down. This one shows almost like a door and then an arch. Um, this one's really difficult to see. I think there might be an arch there, but you can see it almost looks like a coffin shape. It's got a thickness around it and it's got some interior. It's a door, so we can do something somewhat standard. So what I'm going to do is, oh, this is actually a good thing to do for right now. Make sure that this is set to, I can either change my axis or I can make sure that I place this. So this is still on my axis, which is nice. So that way that door sort of sits. I don't know how big I want the door to be. I don't know. It's okay. 
So I'm going to taper this by grabbing this corner. Nope, uh, taper it. I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to scale this. Oh, how do I want to do that? Let's, let's give it a thickness first. Maybe that'll help. I could be wrong. That could make it. Yeah, that might help. Because then what I could do is scale this. Because what I wanted to do is make it like that coffin shape where it's taller at the top. See where I'm going? Yes, yes. Reminds me of that door in Beetlejuice. Do you remember when when um, the the guy who's the wedding officiator was gonna was coming out? <laughs> he comes out of like the fireplace. Oh, it was really cool. The shape of everything. Everything's like all off kilter. It is fun when there's no right angles anywhere. I know. That's a little bit of the challenge of this one is that it, I can't just kind of stop it here because I think that the the reality is is that um let's see what's the best okay so again if I pull this out just a little bit and give it a little bit of a thickness then I can take that and I can scale that and this is where it starts to get like you start to get really hung up in the weeds because you can spend quite a bit of time you can look at that now and see oh okay yeah that's not you know, there's a little bit of a scale to this. The whole thing looks a little big, so I'll just group that, make a component of it just in case. And I can scale that down. Let's go ahead and give that a... What would you call the top of the... What do you call the top of this? I'm not an architect, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not one, but I just play one on TV. I just play one on TV. You know what's cool about SketchUp? A lot. But specifically, is that I get to play architect. There's nobody telling me I can't do this. At least not right this minute. Nope. And you get to violate all those building codes. That's right best part because I'm not a big fan of building codes anyway because a lot of them although I know we need them you know especially for things like ADA and, and um, you know don't take this out of context but like there's there's a lot of really cool things about older buildings that you could do uh, like you know when when you didn't have to put ramps in so I'm I, I'm all for ADA but I do know that like you know before we had a lot of like and so I'll give you another example maybe a better example is like in LA when you're building uh, not skyscrapers, but when you're building just um, like apartment towers, you have to have stairwells on both sides. And it's like that eats up a lot of your core space. And I know that that's also adds cost. It's like one of those things, it's like, can we not figure out? So that's what codes. But then again, there's, I remember the tri triangle shirtwaist factory fire. And then I think I, the more staircases, the better. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, no. That that balance is 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 never perfect, and uh, and and we live in an imperfect world. I'm trying to I'm trying to, yeah. Doing all we're all doing the best we can. That's that's what I like about COVID. Because I know for some of you who remember, there was this thing not too long ago, and uh, it was just kind of a reminder that it's like, look, man, we're all doing the best we can. And that's what I try and tell myself too, like right now, do the best I can. Does it meet Tyson's needs? No, but he's, he's, you know, a master modeler and it's, it's going to be really tough to please a guy like Tyson. Cause he's just so insufferable. He's just, he's too good. He's too good. Tyson is good. Tyson's a great modeler. I like watching him because I think, oh wow, I, I wouldn't have done it like that. Oh, now I'm now I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of lost a little bit. So this is the part of this is part of the sh the part in the show, kids, where I didn't want to do that. All right, I'm going to do that though <laughs> because I'm just. Gonna... Are, are you free So what I'm now? trying to do here, yeah, what I'm trying to do here is just kind of create a little bit of detail in this. I mean, this is not even centered, so. As you can see that in a good way, actually, this kind of this kind of style of modeling, this kind of fast and loose almost suits me better. Um, times two. Because I'm not really this is the way I model. It's like I'm I'm pretty improper. I'm pretty loose. 
and, and this is a perfect example. I'd like, I mean, so many are of just, you know, we, we like to say, what are you, what, what are you trying to create? And I think for you, you're trying to create this cool visual, especially from one view, given the, the time constraints you have, but like, I, I, I've thought, oh, wow, this is a cool, your, your, one of your reference images is a model. And so if you were to actually try to 3D print some of this to put it together, wow, you'd have to spend so much more time modeling uh, and being clean and, and resolving some of these. But for visuals, this is a perfect approach. You totally can be loose and you totally can just get away with a lot more. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm trying to get this off that wall just a little bit because it was bugging me. There are some things that I do get hung up where it's like, oh, I need to just sometimes be okay with moving past some stuff. So this is where I, I can't get that perfect because it's trying to snap. This is where I'll enter a degree. 10 degrees, nope, 9 degrees, maybe 8 degrees. So if I'm finding that I'm like my view is challenged a little bit and I was like, oh, it's it's just not getting me to hit where I want, that's when I would go, um, that's when I would go to degrees. Okay. Let's draw a window on this side. So if we go back to our imagery, save. Uh, there's a window here. It's kind of a, a pretty much a Gothic arch. So that should be pretty simple. It's got maybe a cross down the middle or some sort of pane divider. It's not super clear. There isn't one really in the sketch, but it looks like there's one here. So it's really just kind of a Gothic arch with a sill and um, a pane. So that should be pretty easy. Should hopefully not be a pain, huh? Get it? You didn't get it. Okay, so I'm giving it. I'm because I'm working at this kind of weird angle. I'm kind of giving it um, some 3D first, some extrusion first, and then I'm going to modify it here. So I kind of want to get something for. Oh no, I should do the. Problem is, is that makes it kind of difficult. So like I, well, something I trick I learned from Tyson is like when you're doing follow me, you wanna do your profile on a flat plane. So in this case, if I wanna do this arch um, at the top, I wanna actually do that. I'm doing that on the flat plane and that's gonna give me a little bit more control. Make sure that my arch actually is where it wants to be, where it needs to be. And then I'm, I can safely delete that part there. So I can just go ahead and do that whole thing. I'm going to, I'm going to tweak this a little bit in a second, but right now I just kind of wanted to get something and I want to push it deep enough that it, 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 it does not goes too deep. So it covers the boards, but it goes deep enough that it, it, um, gives a little bit of a, so that the sill has a little bit of a reveal. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do a quick plug yeah. based on a comment. Somebody was just asking for recommendations on good Please, layouts. Yeah. And since you, sir, have done two uh, pretty solid layout courses in our uh, SketchUp campus, Sketch so learn.sketchup.com, Eric has created two courses in there. Those are all free to use and access. And one is on essentials. Kind of just starting up with SketchUp, and the, the other is on more detailed uh, creating documents using layout. Sorry, I said SketchUp using layout. So um, I think a recommendation was LinkedIn Learning. They do have some good stuff over there too. There's a there's also some great Master SketchUp. Our our friend uh, Master SketchUp and our friend Justin Guys, who does uh, SketchUp Essentials, have done some good stuff. But so of you, Eric, so there's check out SketchUp Campus, learn.sketchup.com. Uh, oh, there's my problem. Oh, yes, we should always be plugging um, Campus because it's just, you know, I mean, that's exactly what it was designed for. I mean, that's the resource that I think we knew was, we all knew was missing. I don't know why that one's not hitting. Yeah, I was. Must be because I drew it off filter. Yeah. 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 Just drawing a yeah. diagonal line in there. There we go. I know. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Tyson. Okay. You know it's funny. So here, here. 
Go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to tweak it a little bit. I think I'm going to break it. I have to be careful when I do this. I want to pull it. Yeah, I want to be careful I'm not doing it along that line because I drew this when I drew it. I didn't draw it on axis. So I somehow I need to figure out how to make sure when I do my shift, I'm doing it. How do you, how, what's your recommendation so that I'm doing it so that I'm following this? Uh, you, you're yeah, not going to grab both of those edges at the same time because the... I, wa I was. See, it's, it's, it's snapping to the green axis and that's why it's getting that twist. The, uh, they don't have a common pivot point above that that would give you that ability to grab yeah, both Yeah, because of I them. built it at an angle. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what's screwing me up. I just want I just want to follow that that one there. That's okay. Like if I follow that one, it worked. You see what I'm trying to do? I'm just trying to give that a little bit of a... Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to tweak that just a little bit. Yeah. Just make it a little less me. uniform. Totally not. Yep. Okay. Lovely. I, it, I'm i sure uh, there, there were a couple of comments earlier that unrelated to this house, but related to just how you're, you crashed twice. And then, then several people chimed in with like, oh, yeah, I was presenting uh, in front of a client just yesterday and I crashed or I was presenting in front of another group and crashed because uh, it's, it's the nature. And I, I think one of the things that's kind of fun uh, to appreciate about this, having done this, is if I go back to one of my live streams and, and, and watch some parts of it, and I appreciate that there are times when you're watching somebody else model and you can see what's going on because in the moment you're trying to focus on one thing. And I, I've had definitely cases in my live models where I'm like, why didn't I notice this? Why didn't I see that what I was doing was clearly not going to work or something? And yeah, you just, it's hard to, uh, I don't know, that's, it. that's where the group think and feedback is so great. I'm doing these one at a time because I found that I had problems with when it, when you're trying to do them all at once. So I'll try and I'll try and do them all at once here and see what it does. Sorry, I just launched. I have two screens, so sometimes I drag my mouse and I'll accidentally launch apps when I shouldn't. Um, yeah, see, didn't like it. So I'm back to doing this one at a time. That's why I put a shortcut for pipe along path because that way you just go shift P, shift P, shift P. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just do this the old fashioned way. So extension, Somebody, it's, I feel like there's an opportunity to like play some Zen music, you know, and just kind of talk through your process. Agreed. What, uh... you know, like maybe, maybe not singing bowls level, but like, I don't know, like if you're just doing these repetitive tasks, does people well... find this energizing? <laughs> Do they find it entertaining? Do they find it? Oh, wait, I want to make this a face me tree. I don't know, but I'm going to use this opportunity. It, it shifts over time, but what, what's everybody's sort of favorite go-to background music right now? Like when, when you're trying to just zen out and be in the mode, what are people listening to? Well, I can say mine, but I want to see what other people say. Well, start us off then. Oh, I listen to an artist. He's an Italian DJ. His name He goes by um, Coccolino Deep, which is kind of a funny name, but... You look him up on YouTube, he does these film-based, because I'm a film guy, so he does these film sort of inspired playlists, like um, for people who have seen Leon, the professional, like he does, uh -huh. he, he does quote, he mixes quotes from the film and um, and just kind of like, like I don't want to say dance, but like electronic music and, and anyways, I think it's cool stuff. Because yeah, because they're hour long playlists, and for me it's uh, kind of nice because it lets me I don't have to switch songs, you know, every fifteen minutes. You know, I can just let it go. We got some some great great feedback. Uh, oh, okay, good. Well, we'll have to read the chat, the comments after this because I want to <laughs> see what people have to say. Yeah, there's uh, some that a lot of these I don't know. Atletico Mints. Well, that's a podcast. Progressive Breaks. I don't, it, I don't know if that's a band or a. a Station. Uh, I, I'm Guto. I'm currently, sorry, Trent. I don't know how to say that. Guto monks. Uh, 
Donovan's joined us and totally uh, epic or uh, the Arcane soundtrack. Man, I listen to the Arcane soundtrack like several times a week. Sound of Siren. And I love this comment. Somebody's like, well, the music I listen to depends on how quick, <laughs> how near my deadline is. Yeah. <laughs> Whether, whether it needs to ramp up a little uh -huh. bit or not. Whether you have the, the space to be mellow or, or whether you're going to um, really, really grind it out. This is, this is the tricky part because there's like a balcony and then it's got this sort of drop down, almost like a, I don't know what you call it, not really an eave, but just kind of a mini roof with like a little dormer. So that's that's what I'm doing right now is basically this. The balcony projects out. You can see that it projects out at about where the window is, um, which show, tells me that I'm low on my window, but that's okay. But uh, we will let it, let it go. No, don't let it go. Hold oh, it. no. Okay. Because uh, I will give you, I mean, we'll, we'll stay as long as you want to stay, Eric, but your 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 twenty minute warning. Oh, I know. Okay, I'm going to use the pipe along path um, tool again. I could use follow me, uh, or I could use pipe along path to just turn that to basically give that a thickness. So I'm just going to do. Um, so I don't follow me though needs a profile. So sometimes pipe along path I can just say oh I just want the number of segments to be four. And then I want the diameter to be six. I can scale it inches. So let's see what happens. And that's too big. Um, so I could just go ahead and do that again. I think that's quicker than follow me. Pipe along path, mm -hmm. four inches. Let's go with four, four by four. All right, and then, and then what happens with pipe along path is by default, it hides the profiles. So I just wanna make sure that I come in here and soften edges and I just go ahead and bring those back just by clicking that. And by default, uh, or that's not a component. So if I did want to um, bring that in here, I could do that. I think we're gonna. Have, I I would like to go. I would like to go over. That's what Aaron said. He said, "Go as long, make this a marathon." But I would love to see what our numbers do when I continue to keep going. <laughs> our, 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 our viewers, how many of them drop? How many? How many people? This is a challenge to our viewers. How many of you are that committed to the process that you'll stay with us? I don't know, especially when you know, as most people know, they can always watch the replay. <laughs> Oh, well, way to remind them that they don't have to be here live with us, Tyson. I mean, whose team are you on anyway? I know, I know. I'm on, on your team. I just, you know, team, also team weekend. And a lot of people are uh, well into their weekend at this point, so. That's right. And for some of us, it's it's maybe considered, depending on if they're getting some time off, it may be considered a holiday weekend for them. <laughs> a lot of people are, are really vested to see how, how you're going to pull it off, though. So you, you, you've got... Well, the challenge is in 20 minutes, I think I can build this awning. And the, the ch so the biggest thing is going to be the roof and the tower, which is I think it's probably going to push us. I'm going to tell you right now, it would probably push us about 45 minutes over. Um, so I don't, by, by no means do I, you know, expect anybody to sit around on a Friday, on a beautiful Friday for another 45 minutes, but I might do it anyway, if it's, if it's okay with, I mean, if tight, if you're willing to Tyson, I might do it anyway. We could, we can uh, right. push, push the limits of what we've done. So here's a kind of a cool technique is that if, if, if I see how I gave this a little bit of a bend, because this is a component, I can select this and then I can come back and change that bend if I wanted to. So I can either make those sit so that there's a gap between them, or I can make them sit like flat and tighter. So I can sort of choose um, what sort of my um, bend ratio is. And then because, now this probably wouldn't be how these would be done, would it? So I'm actually gonna read, I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna shift. I'm gonna make this a component. And then I'm gonna copy one of them down. Sorry, I just changed subjects, Tyson. I went back to, I went back to work. If you don't mind. <laughs> Back to work. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that a component. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to copy that down. 
these are the fun things where it's like, oh, I've got so much to learn. Like, oh, how could I do this better? Times four times three. All right, I'm just gonna call that good enough for now. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna explode these, not the inside component, just the double group. Uh, extensions, access tools, set origin for selected. Yeah, let's go that way. And we're going to go extensions. You'll notice same ones. I'll say it over again. It's Chris Fulmer. I'm going to buy him a, he doesn't drink, but I'll buy him a, a Pepsi next time I see him. So we're going to go 0.9, 1.1. I'm going to go minimum two and maximum four degrees rotation. That was pretty subtle. Should we try it again? Or just uh, go with it? I'm going with it. I'm yeah, going with it. That looks good. Yeah. We can always change it later. Let's go back at the end. And really I want to hang these off a little bit more. Man, I will say this. Um, when I first really properly started, what I would say properly starting using SketchUp, I knew so little. Oh, it's a, it was embarrassing. Now it's it's just so much more. It's so much more fun. It's such a joy when you when you. So for anyone who's out there who's in that sort of early stage or in that sort of learning curve, hang on, okay? Because it's it's so much more fun now. Well, and the other thing I, I, it's worth saying, and uh, you could say this, Eric, rather than me, like this project probably pushed you into remembering or learning a few new things. Like you, you gotta pick a project that challenges you and pushes you out of your comfort zone. Oh yeah, uh, that's a good point. For those of you that are looking, you know, to to learn, yeah, you can't. You're probably not going to do that by saying, "Oh, I'm an architect by day and I'm just going to build, you know, boxy houses at night." It's like you try to. I'm not saying not to do that. I'm of course do that, but I'm saying that, you know, by by saying oh, I'm going to model, a, you know, an octopus, it's like that's where I think things start to get really, um, kind of really funky really quick. All right, uh, let's do the portal. Let's just do a quick little dormer window here. We're gonna we're flying fast and loose, which is my favorite way to model. Mm -hmm. What is Maverick? Is it Iceman? What is Iceman? How does he fly? Does he fly ice cold? He flies ice cold, doesn't he? Oh yeah. That's kind of how I like to do it. I'm just making this up. This is clearly not how it goes. At this point, it's my model. What's the song? It's my party. I can cry if I want to. It's my model. I can do yeah. it however I want to. Do it however I want to. It's also a song. It's you my life. Too. You now would or cry. Never. You would cry too if you had to model this live in two hours. You would also <laughs> cry. That would be okay. Yes. And I would say, yeah, I get it. Yes, we would. <laughs> you would. You should. If you didn't, I would be like, you know, I'd be really impressed. I'd be really impressed. Like, this is what I'm saying. When there's people who are like that much better at stuff than you, I'm just always so impressed. And there are, you know, there's like the Chris Rose Warrens out there in the world. And, you know, Aaron is, um, our own Aaron is one of those, you know, where it's like sometimes I'll see stuff and I'll just be like, damn, excuse my language. He's very, <laughs> very, very good. And I'm, and, and it's fun. To watch people like that it is very fun and if anything that's kind of been a little bit of like my motivation is kind of because i'm i'm a bit so i'm for people who don't know i'm i have an identical twin brother so as you might if you might guess um we can be when you i'm we're kind of competitive so it's no i'm competitive i don't think he can i don't think he knows that we're ever competing i think he it's always me who's like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> I can, I can, I can beat, I can beat that. So for better, for better, or for worse. Uh, let's see. This is the problem because I have my angles are coming at two different angles. I have one here and it distorts. So I may have to just fake this because you can see I didn't do this. I didn't really model this correctly. I'm just gonna. What I'm trying to do is do that. I'm trying to get it down here. And then I need to come back with the blue and then I need to fix that rotation. So I have to do this multiple, I have to do this multiple times. 
this is probably like the least fun part to watch, like to do shingles and stuff. Oh, how could I do? Hmm. Oh, how, Tyson, you know you know how to do this this kind of rotate thing. Yeah, I, I would suggest. Does that ever work for you? Grab that I feel like that doesn't really work for me. Lock the blue, and just make it look good enough. Just lock the blue. Okay. Oh, edit, redo. I'm going to go ahead and save for those that hadn't called me out on it. I'm, okay, thank you, Tyson, for just telling me to just do this for right now. And what I can do is, if anything, I would actually, um, I'd prefer to, I'd prefer to fake this part. If I was really worried about it, I would, I would just do something like this. I would, I would just give it a little flat top. <laughs> awesome. So, That's right. There we go. See, it's your model. Yeah, see? Mm, copy, paste, move that to the side, scale that by negative one, or use the mirror tool. All right, really, it's, what's, what's kind of important is that it's, it's not going to really be seen from above. It's going to be seen um, from below. So I think that's kind of what I'm, when I was saying, think about the level of detail. I think that what we've seen from the movies, the, from the movie shots and stuff, is that you're seeing it from below here. So I think that's really more, now that I'm doing that, I'm seeing that I've got um, a couple of, I'm going to get rid of those, even if it affects, oh, it doesn't affect. Okay. So Quick and easy. now we're going to do this balcony thing here. You're like, there's more? Everyone's probably... Hey, if any if any of you out there are starting to get a little tired, I I I feel your pain because it's it's quite a bit. So, uh, actually, the comments are more along the lines of now that we all know you have a twin brother, most of us are convinced that it's actually not you modeling anymore. It's your twin. So, well played, Eric, so called. Yeah, that's right. So that's the advantage. So if I if, if I wanted, a, I was, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to pull that out just a little bit to give it a little bit of a kink. Oops. Well, it doesn't. No, I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it square. I'm going to leave it. I'm gonna leave it square. Yeah. Okay. Is your twin name Derek? Eric. That's so funny. <laughs> Whenever um, I give my name at like a coffee shop or something they always think it's Derek. And I was like, it's not, it's not. I didn't say that. I don't know where you got that from. Uh, Every time. Okay, so there, um, did that little roof thing, um, did the balcony. We've got some little little um, supports that go up from the balcony. And then I'm sure there's a door here that I can't see. If we come up to this one, I can't see it. Come down to this one, there's, I know it's still hard to see. Um, so we can either ignore or put in something that, or just even copy the door from below and bring it up. But basically we need the, we need this two support beams and then we need to pull this volume over and then we need to create the arc for the massing of the roof. So even if we just get the massing of the roof, um, that would be pretty good. But again, if we could do the roof in the tower in like 45 minutes and that's not pushing us too far over. So let's see how, let's see. Let's see what we get. What were you saying, Tyson? What you, you said that we did, you guys used to do these like much longer than they were like marathon, it, like real marathon. Jody brought that up. He, he said that three hours was not uncommon in the early days. We, uh, we tried to, to, to cut that down a little bit, but it is not without precedent. Okay. Also, this model, um, Eric, I mean, I, I don't think well, anybody's at all like, oh, yeah, this is this was a very good challenge. So steal for myself. You know what they say? What do they say? What's the quote? Good artist copy, great artist steal. Mm -hmm. I steal from myself constantly. Cause I built it so I can take it. Yes. No one can say anything. You're not going to see, I'm, um, you're not going to see this little, I kind of was trying to give a kink to it, but I ended up, oh, I see. That's probably where that joins. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm just going to move the door. I'm just going to line the door here. Cause you're not going to be able to see it from below anyway. So I'm not too worried that 
And, and if I really was, I would just um, trim that. I could just trim this part off. I was really concerned. Yeah. Carry on. Keep calm. Model on. <laughs> Whoop, didn't get it on that side. If I was Matt, I would have uh, I'd have some good sound effects to that to that end, but I'm not as good as Matt. So, all right, got a door. So now the next thing is I need to look at. It looks like the house continues to get wider as it goes up. So I think that's probably a good opportunity to take this piece here and scale it. I don't want to scale it this way, though, because I've already had my door. So what I want to do is scale it that way. Ooh, how do I do that, Tyson? I'm going to, so I like having Tyson here. I can actually ask him questions when I get stuck. Yeah, that's... Okay. Is that the right would that be the right way to be to do that to group that separately so it doesn't stick? No, it's still that line is still broken right there. Yeah, you, you try to scale that upper piece. Yeah. Oh, the oh, you know what? That's that's fine. I'll just I'll just leave this flat. I'm cheating it. I'm gonna leave this flat, and then I want to scale this by holding. Nope. Again, I only want to scale the side. Yeah, there it goes. I'm okay if it folds right there because I'm I can hide that. I just wanted to make continue to make this look bigger as it goes up because of that sort of off kilteredness that you see. Don't really like that fold there, but um, it's what it is. You know, I would do that if it was me. If it was if it, if it was a different time, a different situation, I would probably um, do that again. So it's kind of cool For that sure. I kept this. Um, yeah, I kept my 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 board lines, so I can just go ahead and unhide those and sort of shift them. Make sure that they are cutting all the way through each side, which I know, which I can see that they're not. Or what I would do is just scale it so that I know that they're being they're cutting through. These are my just my cutter tools, almost like using solid tools. This is just my intersection cutter. And then what I would do is copy that, delete it, come in here. Paste that in place, select that and that, intersect faces with selection. Hide that. I appreciate and there that go. there's, you know, we there's enough people that have, have been with us for a while that, that we're getting references to say the, uh, the video card and other models that went painfully long or awry in various ways <laughs> there's always a another reference all right this is where it's going to get really tricky um oh i want to just i'm just going to draw some boards in on this one here so this one will be pretty easy because i'm just going to oh how do i want to do that i'm just going to draw I'm just going to draw some some like manually so it's probably easier at this point if it's just like three or four it's probably easier just to draw them you know mm -hmm. than it is to uh, oh yeah if there's only a few and you're just like oh I'll just... yeah i'll just draw i'll just draw this that is as we say do. stitching yes Okay, it's really just kind of for, it's just for aesthetics at this point. Is that? Okay. And that one, I'll just, I don't really like this one here, but I think I have to leave that because I, that's where I distorted the geometry. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it. Okay, good enough. You got to tell me, you just, you just got to say good enough, good enough. Go here, go, keep going. All right, all right. Uh, this is going to be the tricky part. Um, the roof has this sort of, you can see that it bends, it, so it's a triangle. It, st it starts as a triangle, but it curves inward and to the right, and then it almost curves up and to the left, if you think about it. The biggest part is going to be the fact that the roof isn't one piece. There's a projection, and then there's another layer, and you can see that it folds in on top of itself. So almost like using cloth works or something like that would be helpful, but I'm not going to attempt that right now. 
we we did we did a version of that um, in that low poly model of sort of a you know, curving slope through. Yeah, I mean, if I was just being really, and if I wanted to do like kind of a reverse curve, I could just do find the tangent on that. Find that that sort of becomes tangent. Let's see, maybe I start there. Yeah, start there. And if I can't get it, I'll just I'll just do where I think it's tangent. All right, so I may need to adjust that a little bit, but that's okay. Let's go with that. Oops, I'm just going to group that. If I can just get the shape of the roof, and then if we don't get like all the shingles and stuff, I, I'll feel better that it feels like a complete <laughs> model. I know that we're I know that we're at five minutes, but I'm gonna let's pause. Let's pause in five minutes and say goodbye to um, the people who have more important things to do, which um, I hope is I hope is most of you. And then the people who um, have are maybe on vacation and have a little bit of the a luxury of time. So what do you think, Tyson? Should I pull this? Should I just extrude this straight back? No, because it doesn't. Because it, it drops down. So I could use solid tools and cut that out of it, but that's going to be tricky. I almost feel like like almost almost like using a vertex tools approach and then softening it might be the best thing yeah that um you already established Even that I, your fredo scale doesn't work the other one um i could just do this and then just build my other roof on top of it i'm just doing that that's true too i i just, okay and here's the thing on this one. I do want to rotate. I want this to come forward. I want that to come forward because there's this whole like off centeredness that makes you feel really uncomfortable. Ooh, I can't do that yet though, can I? The image, the, this roof projects from the front facade and projects to line up with the balcony. So before I, before I off kilter it, I should pull this out that far. And then think about what do you think? What do you think that angle is? That's 15 degrees. Oh no, I think that's exactly 17.29. I mean, I, I, not to be pedantic about it, but that's exactly what it is. Whatever. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't know why. I've never led you astray. What are you talking about? <sighs> Uh, okay, poll time, guys. Uh, who thinks it's... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I control the polls, and I'm not putting that one up. <laughs> you control the polls. Okay, I, I might have scaled it too much. All right, so if we come down here, and I go back into... I was in parallel. I was in plan mode, because to do that, if we go like that... Oh, I haven't tilted it forward yet. Man, the order of operations, I will tell you right now that I, I will constantly struggle with like, oh, do I tilt this first or do I do that second? Okay, let's go back down here. What do you think scale wise? If I go from here, I know it doesn't have the back roof. So that's what it doesn't have the shingles coming down. It's, it's It looks almost like a gnome's hat at this point. But so I know that that's not right because it has to, it, the shingles need to come down over the eaves need to come over the facade, right? Almost to where that wind sort of overlaps that window a little bit. And that's going to give it sort of more feel like a roof. Right now, I'm just really thinking about the shape and sort of the way that it bends and leans. Do we, are you feel, are you feeling okay? Uh, yeah. With that? Give it a try. Okay. It depends. Yeah. Like this is, this is where you get into your artistic call of like, well, what's, good enough for what I'm trying to do here versus how uh, how much I want to work towards some semblance of accuracy. It's always good enough. All right. All right. So the hard part here is going to be if I scale this, I can also, which one do I want to do? 
not that one. No, that's going to be, yeah, if I wanted to make this a little bit hang over a little bit more, I could do that and just kind of give it already start to set it up to overhang. Problem is my window is too low now. You're like, you're worried about the window, Eric. That's like the last <laughs> thing you should be worried about. And you notice my door um, is sticking through my. It's attention to details though. And I think that's what I love about, about design and about environmental design and landscape and urban design in particular is that, and that's true. I guess that's true. Oh, what happened here? Oh, I erased my bottom part. I'm going to have to bring that back. Wow. Look at that. That does look weird though. That shape feels, shape feels really off balance. Can I, can I pull that? I won't be able to pull that back over. Can I, mm -hmm. I wanted to. No, that's a no, warpage. But, but I could, I could kind of tilt it a little bit if I wanted to. So uh, I don't know if it still works. This, this is one of those things where um, it would create a, a whole lot of warp geometry, but it, that still might work. Like what is it? FFD um, might do something like that. Yeah, I can always bring it down a little bit. You know, there are some, there's a little bit you can do still with scale. So if we wanted to um, just do the stretch, you know, we can sort of do a little bit of that fine adjustment. What does the front of the roof look like? Is that just the shingle? Is that just a boards? That's just board plank with a small window. Something like that, yeah. Okay. All right, so we are two minutes after. I'm gonna press pause here. We have to make a decision, folks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Let me hang on. Give me a second. I'm going to go here. I'm going to turn my shadows on. And I'm going to find Jack Skellington. I'm going to ask him how he's doing. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, cool. And I'm going to go up here. Camera, field of view. Let's make it something wide, like 60. Because that feels more like something you'd get with Tim Burton. Let's ask Jack what he thinks. <laughs> yeah. You get more stream perspective. Okay, there we go. So here's what I want. To, here's what I'm thinking here. First of all, I want to. I think this this house needs to rotate over just a little bit because remember I told you you're kind of looking at it more yeah, like a three quarter. Skewed. So what was your mat? What was the number? Seventeen point two nine. Uh, that's that's the correct. That you said that it should be. Okay, thanks. And I was right about that. At this... <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's good. Those trees in the base, those trees in the base should be grouped. If we want to bring the whole thing down a little bit, we could if we felt like that if if we felt like it was too big in comparison to the um steps. But yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good. I know that was I know that wasn't um I know that we're not done. Hang on, I want to get this part here. Intersect faces with model. There we go. I wanted those. I wanted those grout lines to come back that I was missing from the stone wall. I'm gonna turn my shadows on. And window shadow settings. We do something a little bit more dramatic than that. There we go. It's a little bit more dramatic than that. Wait for it. Where'd my shadows go? Oh, did I? You know what? So funny. Where did they go? Oh, they're there. That was weird. All right. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what's going on. Okay. I think we should just call it there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work on, I'm going to keep working on this myself because I just, um, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun and I want to post it to 3D Warehouse after this. And I feel like I'm not going to feel good about it without the shingles and the tower. Um, unless people are, unless we get enough people that would want to go for another half an hour, I'd be willing to, um, I'd just take a break for two minutes and come back and we would finish the roof and the tower and then, then we'd call it done. Either that or we stop here. I don't know. I'm, I'm all about the people's choice. I, I think you're, I think you're like, we, we definitely had people willing to hang out and hang around, but I think you're okay here to stop too. Um, the sinking uh, has gone in and out a bit. Um, but yeah, I, uh, 
this is pretty awesome. I mean, what you, 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 uh, pretty marathon session going on. Yeah. Thanks Tyson. So this is kind of what you're getting when you look at it. Um, when you see it, like if I was going to do uh which I, next time I'm going to actually probably maybe send this to layout and, and put some dimensions on how you would build, you know, Jack's house. So figure out what the structure might be and then send it to layout and do a, con uh, like a conceptual costing set that we might be able to do for Jack, um, in case he needs some work done. What is that line right there? That line shouldn't be there. All right. I'm going to call it, but I'm going to keep working on this today. Uh, so that way I can post it to the forum and I can post it to 3D Warehouse. So that, I want to say thank you, awesome. everyone, for inter just letting me do this fun little project that I thought would be a little bit of a sort of something different new from what we normally do. And Tyson, anything you want to say before I hit the... Uh, Thanks for watching button. Nah, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, as Eric said at the beginning, we will be out next week. So uh, everybody have a, a wonderful week. Uh, safe holiday if you if you are doing that, but otherwise we'll see you in two weeks. Don't know what we have on the agenda, but man, Eric, this looks amazing. And I, I think everybody agrees that uh, you sort of pushing the boundaries here. All right, well, I will say thanks to everyone. Have a great weekend. Have a great holiday for those that celebrate next week. And we will see you in two weeks. And uh, for those that do want to see the finished model, check back on the forums later today. I'll post it to the same um, live stream thread that we always post um, where we share the link to the YouTube video. So at that, at that I'm going to say thanks and see you next time, everyone. Thanks, all. Cheers.